Hello! In today's video, we're going to work on a solo ukulele arrangement of Carrick Fergus. I'm playing this on a high G, although it's compatible with both, and this is a beautiful arrangement to up your finger style game. We're going to learn how to incorporate fills within this beautiful melody, and it makes for a really great lesson for somebody who's maybe looking into that intermediate zone and trying to, again, increase their, their skills, or maybe you're a more advanced player who just wants to work on tone and control. This is a beautiful melody to do that with. Let's go and take a look at the tab, which is going to look something like this on the screen. And if you'd like to download a copy of this, check out the link down below for my Patreon page. We'll talk more about that later. This first line has a pickup bar, and I'm going to play it so that you can hear what this is going to sound like. It should be something like this. So now what you should immediately notice with this tab is that it's got a bunch of these parentheses in there. All those parentheses notes, those are optional notes. We'll be talking about that as we go through, but those are your filler notes, and that's just a way to differentiate them. As far as the technique that I'm using here, I'm using finger picking. I like to use four finger picking quite a lot. You can use three finger picking, but really any finger style technique is going to work really well. I've actually got a link to a video right here where you can learn how to finger pick in four minutes. So if you haven't done that before, I highly suggest checking it out. Let's go ahead and dive into how to play this tune. We're going to start here with the third fret on the A string. I like to use my ring finger here. I'm going to pluck that. I'm going to pluck that note again. And then I'm going to play two on the A with my middle finger. And then I'm going to go to this little F chord. Take my index finger, just add it here on the first fret of the E string. I'm going to pluck my C, E, and A together. I can use three fingers, my thumb, index, and middle, or I can use my index, middle, and ring depending on if I'm doing four finger picking or a three finger. After I've done that, I'm then going to play two on the C by adding my middle finger here. And then I'm gonna play some filler notes. These filler notes are going to be one on the E string, two on the C, open on the A, and then into the next measure, a G7, keeping your fingers here where they are, add the ring finger on the second fret of the A string and pluck all four strings. Or you can take your thumb and strum through all four. Both of those work, whatever you like the sound of more. But you notice those notes are in parentheses, so we wanna play them softer so that we can create this nice dynamic and depth to our arrangement. Then we'll play the two on the C, which is already there. Open on the E, taking the index finger off. Put the index back on, play the two on the C and the one on the E together. And then this might be my favorite part of the whole song. I'm gonna pluck my C and E strings together, and I'm gonna slide them up to four on the C and three on the E. So you can see on the tab, there's a little lines there. That means to slide. You're gonna pluck them where they were, which is at two and one, and immediately slide them to four and three. Trick to doing a good slide, make sure that you increase the pressure ever so slightly as you're moving the fingers up the fretboard. That helps maintain the sustain and vibration of the string. Going to the next bar, we're gonna play our open G, C, and E string. So we take the fingers off. Two on the C, you can use your middle finger there open on the C. Then we're going to play three and two on the A string. Notice how these are parentheses, so play them nice and soft. I like to use my ring finger here, then middle finger. And then going into the last bar here, I'm going to play an A minor chord by just opening that, playing my C, E, and A together. If you're playing on a low G, real quick note, you can add this two on the G string. Strum through the whole thing for this nice richness. If you're playing high G like me, you don't need that because it's just a double note. So we just play that open C, E, and A together. And then to finish this line, we're going to play open on the C, two on the C, you can use the middle finger there, and then open on the E. So this whole bar is using a lot of finger style. It's important that you get comfortable with this technique, although this is a great song to work on getting that comfort with. Let's go ahead and hear what this whole first stanza should sound like. It should be something like this. Oops, I went right down to the two. It's twice on the three. Let's try that again. Quick note here, this count is in what we call 6-8, so you should feel this sort of feeling of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It feels like triplets going because that's how these compound time signatures work. If that's confusing, it's okay. Just think that you should be feeling kind of a little bit of a sway as you're playing this.
hear how I'm kind of swaying back and forth as I go through. That can give you a good perspective for the, the tone. Now we go on to measure five here, and measures five through eight should sound something like this when played. So the way that we're going to play this line is we're going to play a D minor chord. To do that, take your middle finger, place on two of the G, ring finger on two of the C, index on one of the E. We're going to pluck those three strings together. Then we're going to do some filler, parentheses notes. So I'm going to play two on the C, open on the A, one on the E, which is all there. And then we play open on the C string. So I'm going to take that middle, or excuse me, that ring finger off to play that open on the C. And the reason is, is because the next thing here at measure six, we're going to play a G7. So that middle finger comes down to the second fret of the C string, index stays where it was, and the ring finger kicks on underneath to two on the A. I'm going to pluck those four. I can also strum through if I'd like. Then I'm going to play two on the A, which is right there with the ring finger. And then I'm going to slide that ring finger up to three, play that. And then I'm going to slide that ring finger up to five, play that. And then I'm going to slide the ring finger all the way back down to three, and play this zero on the C, zero on the E, and three on the A all together. A little bit of a tricky section because that ring finger is doing so much work. It's okay to even slide it around. If you'd like, you can add a little bit more texture to your arrangement. But after we've played that C chord, the zero on the C, zero on the E, three on the A on measure seven, we're gonna do some filler. Pluck the G, C, and then the E string with the first fret. So we add this index finger right here. Then we play the three on the A which we're already there, zero on the G. And then we're going to take that index off, play zero on the C, zero on the E together. Then we're gonna play three on the A, three on the A again, and then two on the A, which you'll notice is the same thing as the beginning of the tune, because this is a repeat. At this point, we actually repeat back to measure one. We'll talk more about that in just a moment. So let's go ahead and hear what measures five, six, seven, eight should sound like. And I'll actually do the repeat there so that you can hear how it goes back into measure one. And we play one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then we go on to the second ending. More on that in just a moment. Five, six, seven, eight should sound like this. Going back to the start. You notice right here at measure seven, I just stopped on that open G. Instead of going on to measure eight here, I skip ahead and go to now measure nine. That is the second ending. So when you do the repeat, you follow those little double lines with the dots. You go all the way back to where you see other double lines and dots. Then you go through and you play the second ending for the second time. And you'll notice measure nine starts by playing the open C as filler, and then it's gonna play three on the E string twice. So where did we come from? Well, we just came from this chord, right? We play open on the C, and then we're gonna take this middle finger and place it here on the third fret of the E string. And we're gonna play that twice, and we're gonna play three on the A with the ring. And then we're going to play two on the A with our middle finger here. It's really important to use the middle finger, you'll see why in just a moment. But that measure nine, Looks something like that, using the right fingers, making sure we're using that middle finger there. And from here, we go on to now measure 10. And this is sort of a new melodic sequence. And 10, 11, 12, and 13 should sound something like this. I kind of got ahead of myself a little bit there because that chord sounds so beautiful after 13. But let's go ahead and break down this 10, 11, 12, and 13. We're gonna start with an A minor chord. So you remember when I told you to use the middle finger here on the second fret of the A string? The reason for that is to set up this here on measure 10. For this A minor, we're gonna add our ring finger to the third fret of the A string, and our index finger is gonna come up to the second fret of the G string. So our middle finger kind of transitions to let these two fingers come into play. We're gonna pluck all four of those strings, or we can strum through. And then we're going to play some filler. We're going to play three on the A, two on the G, zero on the E, and zero on the C. Quick note, those filler notes, obviously a little bit quieter. 
But when I play the open on the C, I pivot my hand off because here at measure 11, I'm gonna play three on the A, five on the A, seven on the A. It's a lot of movement. So to do that, I wanna set up my index finger to start here on the three of the A string. And I can't do that if it's still on two of the G. So when I play that open C at the beginning of 11, I take it off and move it towards so that then I can play three, five, seven, five, three. I like to use my index, ring, and pinkies. You can also use your index, middle, and ring if you like a bit of a stretch. Different ways you can do it. As long as your pinky, or excuse me, your index is the starting point, you're going to have a good time with it. And after I've played that measure 11, I go in 12, play this tricky chord. Index is gonna jump up to two on the C. Middle finger here to three on the E. And the pinky finger here is on five of the A. To start, we only need these fingers fretting the individual string. But halfway through the measure, we're then going to play two on the A. So what that means is this index finger, it has to collapse and bar across the second fret of the C, E, and A strings. When you do this bar, don't just push, push, push. Remember, pull back a bit. Helps pinch over the string. So after I've played the four together there at the beginning of 12, I then play the two on the A by pulling back, and then G and C, which are already there in the chord. Going into the last measure of this section, I'm going to play the three on the E string three times. And then I'm going to collapse this middle finger so that it now bars on the A string as well to play that note. This can be a little bit of a tricky transition. So what can help is before you play the first three, just do the bar. Just because then it sets you up. If you need to use other fingers, it's totally fine. Find what works for you. As long as you're getting that three on the A, you're gonna be good to go. And we're gonna play five on the A with our pinky finger here to close that section. So measures 10, 11, 12, 13 should sound something like this. It should go. Now going right into the next section, this part at 14, going all the way through 17, should look and sound like this. So to play this section, we're gonna start with this beautiful C chord. So we just came from this nonsense, right? Well, we're gonna slide our pinky up to fret seven on the A string, and our index is gonna kick over to three on the E string. And we can strum through all four, or pluck them, whatever you like to do. And we're going to pluck the C, E, and then G. If you're playing a low G, you'll get this nice bass response. If you're playing a high G like me, it's this nice drum. And then on measure 15, we're going to play this F chord by taking our pinky, moving it up to 8 on the A. Index finger is then going to slide up to be on 5 of the C, E, and A strings here. So we have 5 on the C, 5 on the E, and 8 on the A. Pluck those three. Hold it, let it sustain. Then we're going to put our ring finger on the seventh fret, take our pinky off the eighth fret, go ahead and pluck those three, let it sustain. And then we're gonna play this G7 sus4, really pretty chord, a little bit challenging. Keep the bar there with the five, with the index finger. Take the pinky, place it on eight of the E while you remove the ring. So it's five on the C, eight on the E, and five on the A. Pluck those three strings together. Then we're gonna do some filler, five on the A, eight on the E, which is already there, and open on the G. And as I do that, open on the G, you'll notice what I do. It's my hands kind of straight up and down here fretting, right? I'm going to tilt it and slide down because I need to get to a G7 for the beginning of measure 17. And that G7's middle finger on the second fret of the C string, index on the first fret of the E string, ring finger on the second fret of the A. I'm gonna pluck through or strum through all of those. So a little bit moment of movement. Looks like that. Quick note on that chord that came right before the G7. Sometimes you might get buzz here. It's usually the pinky that's the culprit. Make sure you're nice and articulate with the angle there and that you're not getting soft and having that A string get touched by it. it can take some practice and manipulation. But then what's cool is that at the end of 17, the three on the A twice, and the two on the A is the same as our pickup bar. It's the same thing that we've already played at the start of the song. So measures 14, 15, 16, and 17 should sound something like this. And 
here's what's wonderful about this. As we go on now to measures 18 through 21, they should sound like this. You'll notice that's all very familiar because it's exactly the same as measures 1, 2, 3, and 4. 18, 19, 20, 21, exactly the same. As what we played on 1 through 4. And something neat here is as we go to the next section, a lot of similarities. We go now to 22 through the end. It should sound something like this. Most of this is a review. We're going to start with that same D minor that we played on measure 5. Middle finger, ring finger, index finger, exactly the same. Same filler part. Going to the G7 that we did at 6. That ring finger line on 2, 3, 5 that we did on measure 6. And then we go to... That's exactly the same as measure 7. 24 and 7, exactly the same. And then it is a little bit different here at 25. We're going to play the open C and open E again. Then we're going to play G, C, and then we're going to add the 1 again. And then play 3 on the A. And then the open G. So you'll notice this looks very familiar because it's almost the same as the measure prior, measure 24. It just doesn't play the 3 on the A string at the beginning. And at the very last note, there's a symbol that we call a fermata. A fermata means we're going to hold it. We just let it ring for a moment. And the reason is, is because then we go to the very end where we play this awesome C chord. 0087, middle finger on the 8th fret of the E string, indexed here on the 7th fret of the A. You can strum through. I like to use the thumb on that one, even if I'm finger picking, just for some dramatic effect. And so these last four bars should sound something like this. There you have it. Bringing the camera back up to me now. This is an absolutely beautiful tune. I loved working out on the ukulele. And I want to talk just a moment about that because this might be different than the Carrick Fergus you know. And that's because when I was looking at this tune, there's so many different arrangements that I, I struggled with kind of picking one to base it off of. And I, I kind of ended up making it my own a lot more than I do most of the lessons here on this YouTube channel. And that's just because I had so much fun working with it. In fact, it's not usually done in 6-8. There are some that I see that are done in 6-8, but I picked that time signature because I felt it really helped it flow on the ukulele and it made it very intuitive to play. Um, this, again, might make it sound a little bit different than how you're used to playing it. Play it the way you feel it and that you want it to be played. If I hold a note a little too long or a little too short, it's okay for you to change that. Artistic license is an important step to developing musicianship. And all that that means is making things your own. So I'm giving you permission right now to change this arrangement any way you want to make it fit the way you want it to sound. This just happens to be the way I wanted it to sound and I'm enthralled with it. I love playing this arrangement. I can't stop playing it even though I've just kind of started making it. And uh, I just think it came out so wonderfully on the ukulele. Again, those parentheses notes are filler notes. You don't have to play any of them. You could just play the notes that aren't parentheses if you want to get just that melody. But the parentheses notes are definitely what gives it perspective or, or rather personality and creates more of the sound that I was looking for. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. As I mentioned at the start of the video, the tab for this is available on my Patreon page. Every month we do a song vote based on suggestions of patrons, and then we do a vote on those suggestions to figure out what the month's tutorial is going to be. This happened to win February 2024, make sure I got the year right, I think in anticipation for St. Patrick's Day next month in March, and uh, I'm thrilled with the result. I think that it was a wonderful tune, and I really like how this arrangement came out. So if you'd like to decide what next month's tutorial should be, check it out in the link below. If you're already a patron, thank you so much for the support. It's thanks to your support that I'm able to do these videos and tutorials. And again, as I already mentioned, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. Hope to see you around the Patreon. Thanks so much. Take it easy. Subscribe, like for notifications, all that jazz. And I'll talk to you soon.